trying not to get any carbs or soap with chemicals or anything that might trigger someone, aluminum foil. Happy Vlogmas. Welcome back, my name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi over on Instagram. Today I want to talk about the binge, shame, relapse cycle that some of you guys might be stuck in, that I have been stuck in in my life before several times for like many years at a time and just offer some tips and offer some encouragement for you guys. I'm gonna talk about possibilities of why you continue to fall into this trap, into this place, and then some suggestions and or some tools to climb out. So before I jump into that, my typical disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, nutritionist, or expert, and I do want to offer a resource, a company that I have worked with, betterhelp.com. You know, some of these things are very heavy, you guys. I have used therapy for many, many years, many, many years, to help myself with my addiction cycles. So, BetterHelp is an online therapy service. I highly recommend it. If it is something that you are looking to do, they are one of my sponsors. I will put their information below. You can get 10% off by using my link. So, now that we got that out of the way, why do you keep relapsing? Why do you keep having these sugar, you know, cravings, falling into a sugar hole, all the stuff, why? So I can only guess and I can only talk from my experience, but for me, the whole addiction cycle, because I've struggled with alcohol, I've struggled with pharmaceuticals, food is my original drug. I had issues with food from the time I was a very young child, and I used food very effectively when I was a young child to, <laughs> my dog really wanted to be in the video, so hope that's okay. <laughs> um, but I've used food from when I was a very young child to cope with my life, to cope with feelings. And the thing about the binging and the sugar and all of that is it's familiar. For me, this is my experience, it's familiar. I'm having a feeling, I'm having a, a 2020, I'm having all this stuff happen. And I know what it feels like to be in a binge. I know the feelings of shame, of guilt and remorse. It doesn't feel good, but I know that feeling the feeling of 2020, the feeling of powerlessness, of fear, you know, of not ever having been at this place in my life before and being scared, quite honestly, is unfamiliar. And it's hard to sit through and it's hard to sit with. It's absolutely hard to do alone. And if you're like me, someone who's prone towards addiction, then you try to do stuff alone because that's that that's that addiction piece that's really that's scary and it's part of the addiction thing is that we isolate and our addiction it's not us it's a voice in the head it says be alone don't tell anyone about this don't talk to anyone which is why of course better help is a resource i recommend but there's also group support you know i do group support groups i do um, i know of a couple coaches that do food addiction recovery groups i'll link them below I have a nice little dog sitting beside me you guys can't see that but speaking of being alone she's come to hang out with me um <laughs> here let me show you her yeah. Yeah, you're so fat Ugh. say hi say hi you want to get in the video this is my dog pedal <laughs> Having a dog helps too. Having a nice fluffy dog. Okay, let's get back in. All right, so not trying to do this alone when you are having those feelings of being scared or, or powerless and then not and trying to stay abstinent. That is what it's all about is staying abstinent because yes, we know what the food's gonna do for us. We know it may temporarily make us feel better. We also are very familiar with, even though it's very painful, the binge cycle. And that's the main message of this video, you guys, is like, how comfortable are you with this binging cycle? And maybe you're very uncomfortable, maybe it feels really bad, but it's still better than all this over here, all the fear, all the uncertainty, all the stuff. So taking a step back from that, and making a different choice you know and it's it's not just that simple but for me it starts with abstinence and now i'm going to jump into some other suggestions i'm going to make for you if you're stuck in this cycle number one don't fast just don't do it because when you're in the binge 
cycle, your body is in the state of fight flight. You, your sympathetic nervous system is running the show. Not to mention behind the scenes, your blood sugar is doing this. And our blood sugar is so responsible for our mood, for our behavior, all of the things. So when you're in the binge cycle, again, your blood sugar is doing this number. And so you're already feeling emotional and upset and your body is in fight flight. So fasting is an additional stressor. Now I'm not gonna say never fast. I'm actually having Dr. Mindy Pels on my show in January to talk about fasting for women. Talk about fasting, because I don't wanna just poo poo it and say never ever do it. But if you're in a binge cycle and you have a history of binge eating disorder and you haven't done the work of therapy or group support or any of this other stuff, don't do it. And if you're trying to get out of that cycle, don't do it because you're going to get to a point where you're starving, you're hungry, you're, you're fasting, you're trying to hit a number and your body's going to seek out that quick energy source. It's going to go to it. And some people can fight through it and really just like, you know, power through. But a lot of people that I know don't get through and it just turns into this nasty, vicious cycle. Okay. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, Actually, I was like tip number two. Tip number one is get support, get help, talk to someone, okay? So tip number three is gonna be eat a lot of fat. Now, choose the fat that you enjoy. I always tell people, even if you're not super hungry, make a point to eat something before lunch because this is another thing and you may not say, I'm gonna do a fast today, but you may say, I'm gonna push my eating window off, which is fasting, but you know, maybe not an extended fast that you're trying to do, but you're trying not to eat till one or two, just wait till you're hungry. There, because the blood sugar is wackadoodle do, you're not just gonna be, oh, I'm gradually hungry, kind of the way we do when we're fat adapted, you know, oh, I'm kinda, I'm hungry, I can make a choice about what I'm gonna eat. If you had that sugar binge the night before, you're gonna get to that point where all of a sudden you're starving and it's hard to make a rational choice about what you're gonna eat. So I always say in the morning after the binge, have some bacon, have some butter, have some fat, eat fat. Eat, just don't be afraid of the fat and don't overstuff yourself, obviously. If you can help it, and that'll get to the next point after that, but after this, but just make sure that you're not skipping breakfast and going into your day hungry because your blood sugar can take a little bit, a week or so to restabilize, you know, some people shorter, some people longer. But while you're in that spiking up and down place, you can't necessarily rely on your hunger signals as much, okay? The next thing is gonna be eating enough food for that day, for the first four days. It is a four day acute withdrawal period that you're gonna go through when you're dealing with this binge cycle, okay? So eating enough food for those four days, not letting yourself get hungry, allowing yourself to, if you feel like you're eating a little too much, don't stress out about it. The goal is to get yourself off the sugar, off the foods, get your blood sugar restabilized. Don't try to macro track and don't try to calorie count and don't try to stick to this, that. Just get through those first few four days of that acute withdrawal phase to get that sugar out of your body and to help to start to get your blood sugar restabilized. And then once you get through that, then you can fine tune and tweak and all that stuff, but you've got to get through those first four days so you don't fall back into that hole, that binging hole. And then the last thing, again, is gonna kind of bring it all for full circle. Don't try to do this stuff alone. Listen to positive YouTubes or you know, videos or anything like that, podcasts. Surround yourself with that energy. Get your body back into parasympathetic. Get your body out of fight flight. Deep breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, walking outside talking to a friend, having a good laugh, watching a funny movie, you know, t get your mind off of food, get your mind off of the situation. And if it is a, a difficult situation you're dealing with, talk to someone you trust about it, whether it's a therapist or you're in a group support setting, or you have a close friend or spouse or someone you can really open up to and talk about your feelings with, because our feelings ultimately aren't going to kill us. Now, if we fall on that addiction spectrum, you may believe the lie that your feelings tell you that they are going to kill you and it's the worst thing ever. And this is always going to be like this. And it's always been like this. And those are lies that that addiction voice tells us, but we don't have to believe them. We don't have to fall into those traps. So don't try to do this alone. And I hope this was helpful. I hope, I hope it wasn't too rambly, but so many of you guys are struggling right now. So many people have reached out to me that are struggling and I just wanted to offer some experience, strength and hope and some resources 
for you guys. So I hope this was helpful again, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.